Phil Foden has been in sensational form for Manchester City this season, having notched up 23 goals and assists in 34 games. And the way Pep Guardiola has utilised him so far this season has made the England star one of the treble winner's best players. In previous campaigns, Foden has almost exclusively been used as a wide player, and fans have been calling him to start central for years and years, even though Guardiola has stated on multiple occasions that he lacks the right rhythm and decision making within his game to play there right now. But this season has been a turning point for Phil Foden, as Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland have both suffered injuries. He's called on Phil Foden to offer a central heartbeat to this City team. As we know, Manchester City forces opposition teams incredibly deep when they're on the ball, often causing them to defend in a compact shape consisting of 9 or sometimes even 10 players. So when City get into these positions, they need a presence either between or outside the lines to help them break down such a compact defence. And it just so happens that Foden is one of the best players in Europe when receiving in these tight pockets, in between the opposition's lines. Guardiola himself has even recognised this quality of Foden by elaborating on just how good he is at being able to play on either side, find the pockets in between the lines and attack the space in behind from a central area. And the stats more than back up Pep Guardiola's own words. In the Premier League so far this season, he has the most shot-ending carries and the second most chances created from carries too, whilst also being sixth overall for chances created from open play in the entire division. We can see how much more he's attacking the centre of the pitch when we look at his past season's open play touch maps. In 2021-22, we can see the three central zones we associate with Manchester City midfielders only has 17% of his touches here. This declined even further into 2022-23, with only 14% of his touches being inside these three zones. But so far this season, he has averaged a high of 25% of open play touches inside the pitch, showing just how much more he's developed and how much more he's been trusted in these central areas. We can also see this pattern of him drifting inside from a wider area from his chance creating via carries map. We can see just how many times he's starting from a wider position and then carrying the ball centrally and playing passes in behind, with the start of each line representing where the ball was received and carried from originally. Phil Foden is quite rarely being played as an out-and-out -out central midfielder on paper though. Pep Guardiola has often given him this false winger-like role that allows him to come in field from this right or left wing position. And whilst this has always been the case, there's much more of an emphasis on him attacking the centre of the pitch than ever before. From here, City use Kyle Walker around Phil Foden as the primary whip holder from right back, so the other centre-halves can shift along and invert to create a stable back three and build-up. This gives City that oh-so-familiar front five of players in the attacking phases, all occupying one lane each. Jack Grealish holding the whip on the left, Foden tucking in from the right wing, and Alvarez playing just off Erling Haaland. But as Guardiola has mentioned, he's a versatile player, so he can provide this quality not only on both sides, but through the centre of the pitch too. Against Brentford on paper, he was played as a left winger, but very rarely did he operate there. He was often tasked with coming inside and playing directly through the middle, and quite often we saw a midfield diamond from Manchester City, with both the fullbacks holding the width on either side of the narrow wingers, which isn't something we've seen from a Pep Guardiola team in quite some time. But for Foden's second goal, we've seen how freely he was moving in between the lines and how well he positions himself to attack the box from a deeper area. Something quite interesting about Phil Foden is the quality of his overall goal scoring. He's averaging 0.45 goals per 90 minutes in the Premier League alone, which is pretty incredible considering he is still only 23 years old. And this becomes even more impressive when you realise he's overperformed his expected goals number throughout his entire domestic league career so far by 11.8. In fact, this season alone, he's statistically the best finisher in all competitions for Manchester City, as he has the highest XGO performance with 3.4. The sky is and always has been the limit for Phil Foden, but his development as a midfielder this season hasn't just made him one of Manchester City's most important players, but one of England's too. And let's say in the summer, England hypothetically use a 4-3-3, with Foden and Jude Bellingham as the two free eights. Then you could play either one of John Stones or Trent Alexander-Arnold in a role that suits them so well at club level, which allows you to bring them infield next to a player like Declan Rice. So Gareth Southgate's side can have one of the best and most balanced box midfields we've ever seen for England. So, do you think Phil Foden has been one of the best players in the Premier League this season? Or has someone else had a better campaign so far?